In this video, I'm going to show you how to choose and use rosin so you can unlock the power and color of sound when you play your instrument. Hello and welcome to Chillopedia. This is Maxim. Let's talk about rosin. Rosin is an amazing tool which might help you to achieve the best sound, but it has to be used correctly. When it comes to choosing correct type of rosin for you, you must answer one question. Do you need dark or light rosin? There is no one perfect answer to this question, but generally, if you play a violin or viola, you would choose a lighter rosin, and if you play cello or especially double bass, you would need darker rosin. However, a good rosin is designed to fit your playing style. If you prefer gentler touch, then lighter rosin might be your choice. And if you prefer darker, more intense sound, then you might need to consider darker rosin. I would generally suggest to stay away from a rosin which is marketed for all instruments. That usually means that it's not good for any particular instrument. When it is good time to replace a rosin you already have. Usually it happens when you have very little left and sure enough it gets cracked. You might just drop it, shatter it against the floor. The rosin is very fragile and you naturally need to replace it with a new cake. When you get a new cake of rosin, it requires a little bit of effort to start using it. Some people suggest even to scratch it with something, even sandpaper, to start because it usually has very smooth surface. I personally find it a bit too extreme. But yes, it takes a bit extra effort to use brand new rosin. If your bowl already has some rosin on it, it's actually not that hard. You just being extra patient and gently start rubbing the bowl against the rosin. You can also move wide bow strokes to do that. And usually, even if you get your bow rehaired, good luthier will put some rosin on it. So it will not be that hard to start a new cake of rosin. Some people prefer to move the bow along the rosin. And some people prefer to do it opposite way. It usually depends which hand is your dominant hand, you move that hand, and whichever way you choose to do it should work well. When you apply rosin, make sure that you turn the cake a little bit to the right and to the left. Some people start doing like this all the time, and very soon you will see a channel which will go through the middle of the cake of the rosin. And this channel will get deeper and deeper and it's really bad because first of all it might even damage the hair because of pressure from the bow will not be evenly distributed along the cake. And also it will not help this rosin to last too long. You will basically cut with your bow through it. So you will only use the middle part of it and it will break way sooner. One more time, you apply the rosin and you turn it a little bit to one side and to another side. And as a result, you will see that you are using the entire surface of rosin. Make sure that you rosin every part of the bowl you can start with the lower part, then 
move to the middle part, then put some extra rosin closer to the tip. If you feel that you put too much rosin, say, at the tip, don't worry. Once you start playing, then the rosin will be distributed quite evenly along the string and along the bow. <laughs> If you're rosin a bit too dry, you might see the cloud of dust all around you. Unless you have bad allergy to that, that shouldn't be your big concern. Most of the rosin made of tree sap with few extra ingredients, so it might even smell as if you are walking in the forest. However, if you see a big cloud of rosin around you every time you play, it might be a sign that you have to replace rosin and choose a new cake because the old cake of rosin might dry out. How often do you need to use rosin? I would recommend to use rosin every day before you start practicing or before your performance. However, I would be careful not using a lot of rosin right before an important performance. You need to make sure that rosin will be spread it all over the bow hair. And best way to do it is to play it for a minute or two until you feel that bow goes very smoothly along the string. A good rosin is a friend of musician, but it's not very good for our instruments. You have to make sure that you always clean your instrument after you play. That means that after you're done playing, you need to wipe the excess of rosin off. You start with strings and you have to be quite firm. Nobody likes this sound. So warning, in a few seconds you will hear something you might not like. So not very musical sound. However, it helps to clean strings. When too much rosin is stuck to a string, it makes it much harder to start the sound. And response from your musical instrument will not be as quick as you would love to. After you clean your strings, you will see the excess of rosin will drop and your instrument will be all over with that. So use the same cloth and wipe it off. So it's shiny again and you can use it next time and enjoy the beauty of your instrument. If you forget to clean your instrument day after day, you will see that rosin will accumulate layer after layer. And to remove it, ultimately you will have to use a special solution. You will have to be extremely careful making sure that this cleaning solution is designed for a string instrument. Which brand of rosin I would recommend? I personally like to explore and I am switching from one brand to another every few months or at least a year. I don't have just one favorite brand, but definitely I like some more than others. I will put a few links in the description so you can browse through them, try some of them and choose which rosin feels the best for you and your instrument. And by the way, I will also put a few links for the proper cleaning solution. So if you need to clean your instrument, you will be sure that the very sensitive varnish will not be damaged. A good rosin helps a lot, but it will not be able to solve all the problems of making a good sound. Make sure that you pay attention to your technique, especially the angle between the bow and the string when you play. And also, if you seem to do everything right and you still don't get a good grip, 
between the bow and the string, well, maybe it's time to rehair your bow. And when your bow will get new hair, you will start it all over again. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new. Come back to Cellopedia for more cello music and interesting information about our instruments.